So music is really at the, the sort of center of the battle between abolition and pro-slavery in the sense that for white folks, when they try to wrestle with the question of slavery, is it moral, is it bad, should it be abolished, portrayals of enslaved people's musical lives are all over these conversations. So um, for pro-slavery advocates, beginning in the 18th century, in the era of the rise of British abolition, there were ameliorationalists. These were people who said, you know, slavery is not so good, but we can make it more humane. Those folks pointed to the musical lives of enslaved people and the, the rich flourishing of uh, music and dance, and they said, see, slaves are happy. And you get this trope of the happy slave, and this becomes something that carries right on through minstrelsy into the 20th century and the kind of um, lost cause representation of the South. Um, you know, that movie, uh, Songs of the South, you know, was sort of the, the happy slave dancing on the plantation. This iconography of, of music and slavery um, is at the heart of what minstrelsy does, but it is also part of the conversation for abolitionists and for um, white abolitionists who are being influenced by these images, and they're also, um, you know, consuming minstrelsy and, you know, um, part of that popular culture. But then you get black abolitionists like Frederick Douglass, who, who writes so poignantly about music and slavery and says, no, 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 people who would point to music um, that they hear on a plantation and say that slaves were happy, you know, they've got it all wrong. This is um, the evidence of the slave sorrow and um, the, the strife that enslaved people endured and that it, um, you know, he says if you put a, um, a man on an isle, a, a desert island and he sang a song, would you say that he was happy because he sang? And then, you know, a generation later, when W.E.B. Du Bois um, writes Souls of Black Folk, um, the final chapter is Sorrow Songs, you know, and he theorizes the black experience around music and the musical life and, and rooted in the experience of slavery as kind of the, the anchor of the black experience and, and the justice struggle. So um, what black music means in white discourse whether they're Northerners who are against slavery or Southerners who are, who, who are for it, black music becomes a kind of, um, you know, a, a trope and, and a popular um, icon in, in their perception that's twisted. And so black fiddlers um, have to wrestle with this. You know, it's part of what makes them popular. It's part of what makes audiences want to come see them, but it's also part of what dehumanizes them.